Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Hornet Media, and welcome to the very first episode of Inside the Hive with Brian Chavez. We kick off our first episode with a special guest that just won the OEC title, men's basketball starting guard Christian Watson. First of all, congratulations with your OEC championship, and thank you for that. yeah, thank you for joining us with our very first episode. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today, man? I'm great, man. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Great, great. Bef- before we get into the season, I want to know more about your upbringing um, in your basketball journey. Um, what's your first memory of playing basketball, you know? Right, right, right. So I've been playing basketball pretty much all my life since since I can remember. I always had a ball next to me. I would say my earliest memory was growing up uh, playing at the YMCA. So I had to be around like, I want to say four or five years old. But I remember just running up and down playing with my big brother, playing with a lot of my friends that grew up in my neighborhood. And that's kind of when I just formed my first love for basketball and just fell in love with playing the game every day, uh, having games on the weekends, that sense of uh, camaraderie with my teammates. And that's kind of um, what made me fall in love with the game. And who was your biggest inspiration growing up? Um, I would say my biggest inspiration growing up was always my dad. He was always or my dad and my uncle as well. They were always two people I always looked up to. Um, I always thought they were the most hilarious people in any room. Um, I always thought they were the most knowledgeable knowledgeable people and smartest people. So those two people really just shaped me into who I am and I can't thank them enough. So you mentioned your dad being your biggest inspiration. Can you tell me anything that stuck with you? Anything that he did that pushed you when you were growing up? Right. So. My dad, I really could just thank him for my mentality uh, when it comes to just playing the game of basketball. He always just stressed to me and my brother, just if you're going to be out here, you got to take it seriously. You got to be competitive. Um, If somebody else scores on you, you should kind of like take that as a sign of like disrespect and you know what I'm saying, respond and kind of just be that person on the court that takes it seriously and uh, just always kind of has that Mamba mentality. So. Yeah. So I, growing up myself, um, when I played soccer, my dad would get on me as well. And, right. and we would bump at that at times. What would you do to, you know, get over that? Well, it is uh, that is something that will happen a lot. Uh, your bump heads. I know me, my dad uh, would bump heads a lot kind of growing up because we both just pour so much into it and we care so much about it that just sometimes we wouldn't always see eye to eye. But one thing I would always know is that the next day he would still be out there rebounding for me. He'd still be out there taking me to practice. He'd still be out there uh, taking me wherever I need to be and picking me up. So I always knew I had him and he always had my back. So that kind of helped me just going through it, the ups and downs of the sport. So Yeah, it's good because um, some kids growing up, they don't take it that way and it just ruins the love for the sport. One million percent. Yeah, but now getting into this season, was there anything that caught you by surprise transitioning from high school basketball into college basketball? For sure. Uh, I think it's uh, two totally different games. I'd say on this level, especially at the place I'm at, it's very a lot more detailed, of course, which you could expect. The practices are a lot more detailed, a lot more intense. Um, and I would just say just the overall physicality of the game as well. You're playing, Of course, you're playing against older guys, grown men, and stuff like that. So it definitely took, I'd say, a little a week or two to adjust to the game and the physicality and just of course older guys are smarter as well so just adapting my game and adjusting and learning how to uh, be effective in the juco uh, game as well I think that helped. Was there anyone in particular that helped you throughout this first season? Yeah I would honestly credit all my coaches and all my teammates I know since I got here in the summer it wasn't necessarily easy I really learned that what the Juco grind is. I know I hear about that a lot, but I learned what it is. A lot of the days I would be up here and I still am up here five to six hours a day working out, getting my work done and stuff like that. So I definitely want to credit my coaches. They take a lot of time outside of practice as well as inside of practice to make sure I'm the best I could be, as well as my teammates just helping me out there on the court, finding me. Uh, That all helps uh, a ton, so. Okay. So coming into a winning team like Fullerton College is no easy task. And you're one of our leading scorers. What motivated you? What pushed you throughout the season to, you know, hit those heights? Uh, I would say 
definitely I would say that kind of goes to the, the, the type of player I am. I've always kind of just been a player that um, kind of will just experiment and I'll kind of just, if nobody's going to stop me, I'll kind of just try to take it as far as I can. So I, it's just kind of just taking what the defense has given me. It also kind of goes with playing with other talented players that opens up a lot of avenues for me to score and, and dish as well. So I think just uh, a little bit of both of those things uh, yeah. kind of has helped me put the ball in the basket and find opportunities. That's great to hear. And to those high school players that dream about playing the next level, mm-hmm. what advice that what advice would you give them? Uh, the biggest advice I would give is just stay down. Uh, I know with sports, it's a lot of ups and downs and a lot of good days, a lot of bad days, and it can be sometimes hard, you know what I'm saying, just staying uh, level-headed and not getting too high, not getting too low, not getting too emotional. I would say just stay down, trust your work. It's all going to make sense one day. If you keep uh, inputting work every single day, you got to get something out of that, and you just got to believe. So I yeah. believe that would be the biggest thing I would say. Okay, and you said um, throughout the bad days you have to, you know, push through it. What, what what helps you push through it? Um, I think for me personally, I think it's just my overall love for the game. And I haven't always had this outlook. Honestly, uh, it's something I've had to grow with. I had to realize and mature and realize that with the sport, not every day is going to be a successful day. You're not going to get 20. You're not going to have a triple double every single game. So you got to just learn how to um, be okay with that, accept that, um, take your small wins and just keep your head high okay and before we go i want to do some quick fire questions you know just to get to know you a little bit more sure, sure. so let's go you gotta go quick man let's you go. can't you can't just think about it too much would you rather run stairs or suicides mm, uh, i'll say suicides suicides you suicides. don't like the burn of the stairs i don't like it it's tough it's I'll tough huh? it's, it's a close one but i go suicide all right uh favorite pregame song Mm. Okay, so I'll go uh, Rilo Rodriguez, Equal Dirt. Oh, man, I haven't even heard him, so I'm going to have to check yeah, that out. Yeah, tap in with that all one. All right, bro. all right. Uh, favorite post-game meals? I would say spaghetti. Spaghetti? Yeah, yeah p- pasta is my favorite food, so something like that after the game is always light. Um, all right. Um, no no meatballs, no spaghetti meatballs, just pure spaghetti? or I don't like meatball, nah. so I'll just go spaghetti, yeah. All right, all right. A.M. practice or P.M. practice? I like AM. I've always been somebody that kind of just likes to start my day. In high school, we had practice at 7 in the morning, so that kind of just got me used to having oh. practice at the start of my day and then yeah. have time for workouts at the end. So. I would probably say PM. Personally, I would like PM because, uh, you it's, know. It's hard because sometimes you, you already got your day going and you kind of end it with it. So it's close, but I prefer and practices. It, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, squats or bench? I'll say bench. Bench? What's your max? Um, I'm not sure. I want to say... Have you hit 225? I was going to say, yeah, like around yeah. two. Yeah, two. Right, that's respectable, man. Yeah. Over a play, I already respect that. Yeah. So that's pretty good. I'm not a big lifter, but I'm getting there. All right. All right. Sure. Taylor Swift or Beyonce? Ooh. See, this is hard. My little sister's a Taylor Swift fan. But I'm a little older than her. I'm going to go with Beyonce. I remember a lot of Beyonce when I was growing up. So I'll go with Beyonce. <laughs> Favorite food here at the cafeteria? I'm going to go with the tenders. I'm a simple guy. I'm going to just go with the tenders and fries. Yeah. Ranch, yeah, that's my barbecue. go-to. Ranch, barbecue. That's all, all good. All both? Yeah. yeah. Nice, so nice. Both good. Would you rather uh, read minds or have super speed? I would say read minds. Read minds? Super speed would be cool in the short term, but as I get older, I'd want to, I feel like that'd be more useful. Oh, man. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, which three-peat was better, 2000 Lakers or 20 teen school in the State Warriors? I, I, I have to go with 2000 Lakers. 2000 Lakers? The Warriors was impressive as well, but mm, the, K, the, the the Kevin Durant trade made it a little funky to me, so I'm going to go with the uh, 2000 Lakers. All right. And would you rather hit a game winning buzzer beater or a game winning block? Mm, I'm going to go with the buzzer beater only because I've never had, since I was really young, I haven't had a, a game winner in recent times, so I'm kind of I'm looking for that. All right. Nice. Okay. So, and that's all we have for today. Thank you, Christian, for joining us. And thank you again for tuning in to the very first episode of Inside the Hive. For Christian Watson, I am your host, Brian Chavez, and we'll see you again next time.